नाना शास्त्र विचारे करने पनो सहधर्म समसापको लोकानामित कारिनो त्रिभुवने महान्यो शरण्याकरो राधा कृष्ण पदार विंद्र वजना नंदे नमतालीकयो वंदे रूप सनातनो रघुजो श्री जीव गोपालको वंदे रूप सनातनो रघुजो श्री जीव गोपालको हरे कृष्णा सो वेलकम वंस अगेन एवरीवन एंड पुलिंग आउट माय प्रेजेंटेशन हियर this is the 14th lesson of our discussion on bhakti rasamrita sindhu as usual we'll do the quick shloka recitation for bhakti rasamrita sindhu anya vilashita shunyam gyana karma adyana avrutam anukulyena krishna hanu shiranam bhakti ruttama sarva padhi vinirmuktam तत्परत्वेन निर्मलम ऋषिकेना ऋषिकेशा सेवनम भक्तिरुच्यते अथ श्रीकृष्णनादी नाभवत्ग्राह्यमेन्द्रिए सेवन्मुखे जीवाद स्वयं स्फुरती यनासक्त विषया यथारमुपयुंजुता निर्बंधकृष्ण संबंधे युक्तम वैराग्य मुच्चते हरे कृष्णा सो बिफोर वी बिगिन अवर डिस्कशन द चैप्टर 9 जस्ट अ क्विक रिकैप ऑफ चैप्टर 8 टाइटल इज ऑफेंसेस टू बी अवॉइडेड ओनली द 19th आइटम मेंशन बाय शिला रूप गोस्वामी वाज डिस्कस्ड हियर वेयर वी सॉ सेवा अपराध यू नो वी रीड फ्रॉम वराह पुराण 32 ऑफेंसेस लाइक दैट and one part which we couldn't cover last time was naam aparad so prior to this in chapter number 7 there were various other rules and regulations were mentioned um while we were talking about sadhana bhakti i was quoting shila vishnu chakrati thakur that one at time and we were making a point how vishnu chakrati thakur says you know there are so many rules and regulations what should be the main rule to be practiced or followed as smartavyo satatam vishnu vismartavyo na chatu chit sarve vidhi nisheda asyor idea is there are so many rules and regulations but the essence of all is smartavyo satatam vishnu we should always remember krishna and we should never forget krishna sarve vidhi nisheda asyor jitne bhi rules regulation hai this is the just an essence of it and regards to this once a devotee approached shila prabhupad and he said shila prabhupad you have written an act of devotion that nobody should come in front of the deities wearing a bright color clothes if you remember there were some colors like red or blue colors were mentioned something like that you know uh, you know uh, we should not go in front of the deities so he asked shila prabhupad prabhupad what do we do about it you know So Shri Prabhupada replied, "Well, there would be many major and minor instructions given like this, but the major instruction, while trying to follow the minor instruction, should not be missed. In other words, the minor should not become the major, and major should not become the minor. What is a major instruction? Smarta viho satatam vishnu. When we come to temple, we should our focus, our attention should be on deity. We should not forget that, and if that goal is kept." then we should not get too much caught up with minor set of instructions just like you know shila prabhupada would receive guru puja right in front of the deities and we read about it in seva aparad in chapter 8 last time nobody should be glorified in front of the deities so one devotee was glorifying another devotee in the temple hall at that point of time shila prabhupada walked in as soon as he saw shila prabhupada he remembered what shila prabhupada wrote in act of devotion and he said prabhupada prabhupada i'm so sorry prabhupada said what happened he said prabhupada i, I forgot the instruction that you mentioned in act of devotion that nobody should be glorified in front of the supreme lord and prabhupada immediately replied well krishna has, has been already glorified sufficiently he doesn't need our glorification 
but he becomes more pleased to see if his devotees are glorified. So the idea is when we are doing any activity, the Krishna should not be missed. That's the principle should be followed. And like this, these instructions have to be seen and applied. Now coming to the last section of chapter 8, uh, and also before we begin chapter 9, Today I was thinking there had been some amount of confusion, particularly for those devotees who missed some classes and when they go back to recordings, they find it a little difficult to catch from where the discussion is starting because so far I was not reading from the book. I was just giving the gist and we were explaining the point. At least for today, we'll, I'm thinking we'll read chapter 9. And while our reading, that time we'll discuss it. So let's begin with chapter 8, the last page which talks about Nama Aparad, the offenses against the chanting of the holy name. All right. Somebody online would like to read the 10 offenses in the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. All right, Nikhilpur, your hand is up. Go ahead. You got to unmute yourself? Yes, you can unmute yourself. Little volume, please. The offenses against the chanting of the holy name. Yes. The offenses against the chanting of the holy name are as follows. To blaspheme the devotees who have dedicated their lives for propagating the holy name of the Lord. To consider the names of demigods like Lord Shiv or Lord Brahma to be equal to or independent of the name of Lord Vishnu. Sometimes the atheistic class of men take it that any demigod is as good as the supreme personality of Godhead Vishnu. But one who is a devotee knows that no demigod, however great he may be, is independently as good as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, if someone thinks that he can chant Kali Kali or Durga Durga, and it is the same as Hare Krishna, that is a greatest offense. Third, to disobey the orders of the spiritual master. Fourth, to blaspheme the Vedic literature or literature in pursuance of the Vedic worship. Fifth, to consider the glories of chanting Hare Krishna to be imagination. Sixth, to give some interpretation on the holy name of the Lord. Seventh, to commit sinful activities on the strength of the holy name, holy name of the Lord. It should not be taken that because by chanting the holy name of the Lord, one can be freed from all kinds of sinful reaction. One may continue to act sinfully and after that chant Hare Krishna to neutralize his sins. Such a dangerous mentality is very offensive and should be avoided. Eighth, to consider the chanting of Hare Krishna, one of the auspicious ritualistic activities offered in the Vedas as fruitive activities, Karmakan. Ninth, to instruct a faithless person about the glories of the Holy Name. Anyone can take part in chanting the Holy Name of the Lord, but in the beginning, one should not be instructed about the transcendental potency of the Lord. Those who are too sinful cannot appreciate the transcendental glories of the Lord, and therefore, it is better not to instruct them in this matter. Tenth, to not have complete faith in the chanting of the holy names and to maintain material attachments even after understanding so many instructions on this matter. Every devotee who claims to be a Vaishnava must guard against these offenses in order to quickly achieve the desired success. Hare Krishna. Uh, Hare Krishna. Can we have the slide? It's so a very simple verse. Bahu Janma Kare Yadi Shravan Kirtan. For many, many lifetimes, even if one does hearing and chanting, Tabuta Na Pai Krishna Pade, the lotus feet of the Lord, Prema Dhana. If the idea is of this verse or the series of verses, if one is infested with offensive mentality, the 10 offenses that were just read by Nikhil Prabhu, and he said, if one is infested with this kind of offensive mentality, even after his hearing and chanting for a long, long time, uh, many, many births even, 
even then he would not attain the ultimate goal of chanting Hare Krishna. So this subject matter of chanting Hare Krishna and the 10 offenses, if I am correct, we had some elaborate discussion in Nectar of Instruction. I believe I was quoting Srila Bhakti no Thakur Bhakti Aloka there and few of the books written by him on this subject matter. Uh, does anyone remember from our discussion in NOI, text number 7th, where the chanting was described? We discussed some points. Or else I can just briefly talk about each of it. Anyone? The 10 offenses. The first offense, the 10 offenses, originally they were mentioned, uh, these are found in Padma Purana and in our writings of our Acharyas. For the first time, uh, the reference of this 10 offenses is found in Hari Bhakti Vilas. And from there, we have received it. And in this 10 offenses, which are originally found in Padma Purana, the very first offense is towards Sadhu, Sadhu Ninda. To blaspheme, the devotees who are dedicated their lives for propagating the holy name of the Lord. So Sadhu Ninda is something which is intolerable for the Lord. Why Sadhu Ninda is intolerable? Who is a Sadhu? Sadhu is one who introduces the world to the glories of the holy name of the Lord. So how can the Lord uh, you know, tolerate any kind of offense towards his messenger or a devotee who actually is giving the holy names of the Lord to everyone in the world. That is the idea. So sadhu ninda, one has to be very careful. So before the seventh verse of NOI, therefore there was fifth and sixth verse, particularly the sixth verse, drashte swabhava chanite vipuchasya uh, We had uh, again a elaborate discussion on NOI for that. You know how we have to be careful of sadhaninda. Srila Bhaktivinoda Chakur in his writings mentioned we should be careful uh, of in particular not finding faults with the sadhu of his past bad habits, past sins uh, or his birth etc. Three, four things he mentions actually. His past sins, his birth, uh, his physical body and traces of sin. Srila Rupa Goswami in Nectar of Instruction text number six he talks about physiological and psychological defects. Physiological defects refers to bodily illness and psychological defects refers to particular or peculiar nature. And in that we had discussed about, uh, you know, even in Ayurveda, uh, our body is said to be faulty. Uh, so, and as far as our psychological thing, subtle body, subtle mind, oh, sorry, subtle body, which means mind, intelligence, etc. Uh, something is happening. Yeah, this is flickering. What was I saying? And as well for physio, for physio, uh, for psychology, for the subtle body, mind, it is affected by three modes of material nature. And there we were discussing the example of Brahmaji, Lord Shiva, Mohini Murti. You know, even they have got carried away. So many devotees at times may have their own peculiar nature. Uh, changing the externals at times are easy, but changing one's nature at times is difficult. So therefore, Srila Rupa Goswami says, one should not look at any of these faults. That's how Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, one should not judge anyone based on his birth, past activities, traces of sin, of physical body. Uh, in case if somebody has committed Vaishnava Aparad, has uh, you know, let's say offended a Vaishnava, what is the remedy uh, to counteract Vaishnava Prath? What will you do if in case we have committed an offense to a devotee? Yes, Saraprabhu. Seek forgiveness. One disciple of Srila Prabhupada came to Prabhupada and said, Swamiji, or not Swamiji, Prabhupada, this is back in 1974-75, he said, Prabhupada, you have taught us about these 10 offenses and you have told us, alerted, alerted us against the sadhananda, but the challenge is all through the day, you know, so much offenses happen because we are all the time surrounded by devotees. You know, God knows how much offenses I commit to different devotees. If I have to go and bow down to every devotee and keep telling everyone, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, then what will I do in my life? My whole day would go on saying, sorry, 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 sorry. And then Prabhupada had a solution. And that solution was, that is a time Prabhupada said, all right, let's introduce 
वंच कल्पात रूपेश कृपा सिंधुप्य एवं पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम सर एट लीस्ट वंस इन अ डे इन द मॉर्निंग आर्स लेट एवरी वन से दिस एंड से विद ऑल सिंसियरिटी नॉट ओनली जस्ट डू हर्ष दैट थिंग से विद ऑल सिंसियरिटी एंड प्रे टू द लॉर्ड माई डियर लॉर्ड इफ एंड केस हैव कमिट एनी वैष्णव प्रात काइंडली फॉर गिव मी लाइक दैट बट नंदन लेस Uh, if in case we have committed some vaishnava prad and we remember that yes as sara pro said this is what is a prescribed method we should find out that vaishnava and we should ask for forgiveness hmm. but what if the vaishnava is not willing to forgive you hmm. what will you do now you cannot tell, tell him prabhu don't you remember chaitanya mahapush teaching trinada pi suni chena करोर अपि सही सुनो ना यू हैव टू बी टॉलरेंट ना यू नो इफ आई एम बीइंग त्रिनाथ अपि सुनी छे ना यू शुड बी तरुण अपि यू नो कहते हैं त्रिनाथ अपि तरुण अपि सही सुनो ना यू शुड बी टॉलरेंट आल्सो वी कैन नॉट टेल हिम लाइक दिस सो व्हाट्स द आइडिया व्हाट इफ डिवोटी इज नॉट विलिंग टू फॉरगिव व्हाट विल यू डू एनी थॉट्स क्वेश्चन वाज आस्क्ड टू शीला प्रभुपाद ऑन द सेम लाइंस एंड शीला प्रभुपाद सेड वेल यू शुड एक्ट इन सच अ वे you should try to please him we should not give up we should try to act in such a way that eventually devotee forgives you of your offense like that now what to do if in case if a vaishnava who has offended somebody he himself justifies his, his action prabhu he is at fault he deserves it don't you see how dirty you know how uh in uh, you know, a dirty way he mops or cleans the floor if the same individual who actually chastised or criticized another vaishnava if he uh justifies his or her actions then what to do this is all part of shila prabhupada's uh, conversation actually prabhupada said well if in case an individual justifies his or her criticism of the vaishnavas then such a person would commit more offenses because he is justifying his or actions so then the devotee asks so shila prabhupada does it mean that i cannot criticize anyone uh well this will be a great austerity then he asks so shila prabhupada who can be criticized and shila prabhupada said yes you can criticize pretenders mayavadis non devotees but with a purpose to protect oneself and one's dependents so a question was asked to prabhupada is correction a criticism and who can offer correction main answer nahi batane wala abhi tum log batao is correction a criticism and who can offer criticism or correction sorry not criticism is correcting a vaishnava a criticism can i answer yes sorry i was not looking at online audience i forgot <laughs> that's rakun pati bro yes 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 go ahead go ahead yeah Yeah. So, uh, Hare Krishna. Yes. So, offering criticism, which we cannot offer. We we should, rather the etiquette is that we don't offer the criticism directly to the question of our concern, but we go to his senior and talk to him about this is Prabhuji. This is what is happening. This is what I have observed. Is it right or is it wrong? Either if I in case I am wrong, then my apologies for having pointed out something about another question of a. and if you think that it is right can you please communicate it with the concerned person okay so now question comes then who can we correct directly or can we not can we or in every case we no, have we to go and find a senior somebody who is like like i am a mentor for example if i am a mentor then i can i can correct those who are whom i am mentoring yes the one who has accepted I, you or yeah, uh, anyone I, as a guru or a teacher yeah. then in that relationship the right is given to correct shila prabhupad makes this point very clearly in the um, bhagavad gita also it's a responsibility of a guru or teacher so when arjuna said shishya se hum sadhi maan tvam prapanna we give right to krishna to chastise and correct him if not then we should so not so here again yes we come to sorry so here again there are three levels of devotees whom we should whom we are dealing with one who is junior and who is who is looking forward to who is looking up to us for uh, to learn something as yes, i can correct him 
those who are my equals it depends upon how i handle them what level of equality is there sometimes i can correct sometimes it may be difficult to correct and in that case i need to be extremely careful about how i deal with because you know being an equal the other person also should not get a feeling that i'm trying to be over smart or i'm trying to be uh, take over him rough shot him oh that's such a feeling should not get he should not get so in such case also depending upon what type of relationship i have if i'm quite sure that he will not misunderstand me then sure i will can tell him but if i am not sure whether he will be misunderstood then i should definitely go to a senior and my seniors certainly i don't have i should not correct them i should go to the seniors here and talk to them very valid points now while presenting our case in what mood should we present our case let's say there is an issue that we notice with some senior even with a peer you know let's not talk about a subordinate uh, then we are talking directly uh, how should we present our scenario so that it doesn't become like an offense but yeah. it has been offered with an intention of clarification uh, how should we present our case then so yes so in me. such a case can i yes yes go ahead yeah so in such a case it has to be in a very real humble mood and we have to be uh, extremely careful of the words that we choose whether even if it's a junior we have to be extremely careful of the words we use the tone we use all these things we need to be careful of because yes. more than the words the tones the tone makes a difference what would be the adjectives that you would use to define what your speech should have of course careful that is all okay what your speech or letter should not have if i ask you that way you should not be doing something like this this is not the right way to do it these are not the these are the types of words that we should always avoid <laughs> put it in a positive manner rather than in a negative manner correct so for example if someone is doing something like for example somebody is doing art in a particular manner and i think uh, this is not a right way of doing it Instead of saying that this is not the right way of doing it, probably I can say probably, probably there is also another method of doing it, and you can look into this possibility also that can be more effective or more helpful. Like that. So thank you for this. One good practice is we should present our observation, but not conclusions. Uh, I'll make a difference between observation and conclusion. Observation means stating what you observed. what you heard what you saw as it is without adding any conclusions to it a conclusion should not be drawn if you felt uh, while observation that there is something wrong just state this is what i observed this is what i saw or i heard uh, i am not sure if this is right or wrong but i felt i should bring it to your notice because whatever we say you know that needs to be investigated also so to whoever we can inform that person is also going to do his due prudence and investigate what we are exactly talking about it while doing so therefore we should not bring conclusions if we bring a conclusion uh, we state a conclusion with our observation what will be conclusion this person is fallen this person is wrong he doesn't know how to do whatever it is then it becomes offensive so while expressing ourselves if we can just stick to observations uh, state the facts and not draw any conclusion that will save us from that all right so sadhu ninda very very sensitive subject matter whom we can criticize or who we can offer correction if in case we have offended somebody what do we do about it we offer forgiveness we ask for forgiveness etc etc in this regard the shila bhakti no thakur also mentions something very interesting what is the root cause of sadhu ninda what is the root cause of sadhu ninda why do we feel tempted to find faults in others or why do we even look at faults in others particularly in sadhus bhakti no thakur has a very simple answer to mention or to give anyone knows about it why uh, yes who is speaking i'm i'm here interatika prabhu ji oh, nv yes yes nv okay okay what else mother chintamani i saw your hand waving up go ahead prabhu i lost your question prabhu uh Andy. i was just i was just concluding this whole series of uh discussion sadhunanda the last point on sadhunanda is uh why would anyone find fault with vaishnavas uh, what is the root cause of uh, sadhunanda 
this is really special of Bhaktivinoda Thakur and he answers it. So I'm just asking that. What do you think could be the root cause of sadhunanda? Why our mind gets into this consciousness where we're looking for faults? Like that. False ego, envy, okay. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, our mind gets contaminated by these fault finding, uh, you know, uh, what is it, outlook, if you want to call it, because of association of non-devotees. Their association contaminates us, wherein we begin to look at faults in Vaishnava, like that. So that's the whole discussion of Sadhananda. Then um, to consider the names of demigods like Lord Shiva, Lord Brahma to be equal, to depend on the name of Lord Vishnu. So in other words, uh, we don't consider them equal. Simultaneously, we do not disrespect them. Disrespecting them is also inappropriate. But we understand uh, them in relation to Lord Vishnu. Third, to disobey the orders of the spiritual master. Uh, yes, uh, you know, to hear, to disobey the orders of the spiritual master. Uh, why would Srila Bhakti no Thakur mentions, if it is already mentioned in the first point, to blaspheme the devotees that dedicated their lives, I mean, not to follow the orders is also a kind of, a, you know, embarrassment for the other devotee. So why would he mention particularly this third point to disobey the orders of the spiritual master? He says, it is not only about disobeying spiritual master, it is in general disrespecting spiritual master. So we have to be careful of all those means by which we can disrespect spiritual master. Hari Bhakti Vilas, the first chapter is all about spiritual master. There Srila Sanatana Goswami have included many quotations about it. Just like how to be respectful towards a paraphernalia of a spiritual master. If the spiritual master's Padukama should not cross over or put feet on the spiritual master's uh, you know, padukas, other bad, etc., etc. In other words, be respectful towards one spiritual master. Fourth, blasphemy Vedic literatures or literatures in pursuance of the Vedic version. Here we have to be very careful. Sometimes, uh, you know, we uh, take it for granted texts like Upanishad, uh, etc. Uh, you know, although we may not be studying it, but we should not speak anything loosely about those Vedic texts. Fifth point, to consider the glories of chanting Hare Krishna to imagination. Sixth, to give some mundane interpretation, uh, some kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, different meanings to that. Seven, to commit sinful activities on the strength, which means, all right, the holy names of the Lord are so powerful. So, this is, cut out of it. It created a problem. I'll have this. Uh, what was I saying? It is said, how do you rectify sin? Sarva dhanman parityaja maam ekam sharnam vraja aham tuam sarva pape bhyo moksha shami masucha. So if you want to rectify your past sinful actions, take shelter of Krishna. That's how you get rid of the sinful reactions. Now, how do you rectify the mistake that we commit uh, in taking shelter of Krishna? Taking shelter of Krishna is seva, you know, rendering deity worship and all that. If in case we have committed seva prad, how do you rectify that? That is rectified by taking shelter of. How do we rectify Seva Prad? We rectify sin by taking shelter of Krishna. Deity worship. But what if the mistakes committed in Deity worship, how do we rectify that? By? Taking shelter of holy name. Yes, by taking shelter of holy name. But what about when we commit offenses in chanting the holy names of the Lord? Whose shelter do we take? No shelter. Haha. Uh -huh. I said no shelter. I'll just pause on it. I'll come to it. Prabhupada gave a very interesting statement on it. We'll come to it. And devotee asked Shila Prabhupada on that. Anyways, that's a point of seven to come in. Eight to consider chanting Hare Krishna as one of the auspicious activities like Kamakanda. Ninth is a very interesting point. Uh, if anyone would like to explain that, to instruct a faithless person about the glories of the holy name. To instruct a faithless person about the glories of the holy name. Okay, maha pe reasoning thoda given hai apne aave. So, to instruct a faithless person about the glories of the holy name, what does it mean? Of course, little explanation is given there. Uh, well, let me read it out only. Many times devotees get confused about it. Oh, does it mean that we don't encourage people to chant the holy names of the Lord because we go out on the street and we tell everyone, chant, chant the holy names of the Lord. But it's not about that. It's about 
uh, speaking about the glories of the holy name. I'll read out what is given here and I'll give you Prabhupada's example. Anyone can take part in chanting the holy name of the Lord, but in the beginning one should not be instructed about the transcendental potency of the Lord. Those who are too sinful cannot appreciate the transcendental glories of the Lord and therefore it is better not to instruct them in this matter. Srila Prabhupada was visiting Russia. He was having his meeting with a professor who had invited Srila Prabhupada to come to Russia and he was sitting along with his disciple and having a conversation. Somehow the conversation, the disciple finding the conversation going nowhere, the person is not able to understand anything. Suddenly the disciple thought of jumping into the conversation and he began to speak spontaneously to that professor about the glories of the holy name of the Lord. Chanting Hare Krishna can, you know, have such a transcendental impact on one's consciousness. Uh, you know, what does Hare Krishna mean? This is Srimati Radharani, this is Lord Shri Krishna, etc., etc., etc. The moment he began to speak like this, Prabhupada said, stop. Do not tell anything about the glories of the holy names of the Lord because by doing so, you'll make this person commit more apraad. In other words, uh, when, what it means by, you can encourage people to chant the holy names of the Lord, but don't get into the explanation of what this mantra means. Uh, people may not appreciate it in the beginning because of their envy, and then they may commit more apraad. But them chanting the holy names is not a problem. That is not a prohibition. That was the ninth main thing. Tenth is not having a complete faith and maintaining material attachments. All right. With this, this is the subject of Nama Aparad. So what happens if in case we commit Aparad in chanting the holy names of the Lord? We overcome sin by taking shelter of Krishna. If in case we commit offenses towards Krishna, in deity worship, etc., we take shelter of holy names. What if, if I'm committing offenses towards the holy name? Srila Prabhupada has the following to state. Let's take a look in the presentation. Hare Krishna. A disciple reached to Srila Prabhupada, approached Srila Prabhupada, and he asked as follows. Mandavati asked Srila Prabhupada that if you commit offenses in devotion service, Hare Krishna. But if you commit offenses while chanting the holy names, then there is no shelter. So then the devotee expressed and said to Srila Prabhupada, So what can we do if we commit offenses against the holy name? And Srila Prabhupada looked at him and said, You are asking this question because you want to offend. And then Prabhupada elaborately described to him that we shouldn't be thinking, How can I atone for this or make up for that? But we must practice not offending. That this was a devious mentality to think, All right, let me do whatever I want to do. I can, anyways, atone for it by this or that method. So don't look out for solutions for your mistakes, rather practice not making those mistakes. We have to be very serious about not offending. Hare Krishna. This is a subject matter on this. Let's come to chapter number nine. Now we'll read out these sections. So the 20th item is blasphemy. So, so far we have already discussed we have already discussed what we should not do it, what we should do. Uh, now that would be what we should not do is kind of concluding here with the last item, blasphemy. And then the discussion will be what we should do. So here in this topic, uh, you know, blasphemy, here is a quotation from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu of how do we deal with insults? What happens if somebody offends you? What you should do? Or in case if somebody offends a devotee, what should one do? So let's take a look at it. Let's read out uh, blasphemy section, chapter number nine from first paragraph. Anyone would like to read this section? We're going to read out from the book now. Yes, Vidya Bhati Prabhu, please read blasphemy. One should not tolerate blasphemy of the Lord or his devotee. It is an extent that they tend to. 74th chapter was put the of the Bhagavata to pay for Swami Jesus Maharaj. My dear people, if a person after hearing blasphemous propaganda against the Lord and his devotees does not go away from that place, he becomes bereaved of the effect of all pious activities. So one should one not hear any kind of blasphemy. 
If one does, he becomes bereft of all the effects of pious activity. And then Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Shishtashtakam verse is quoted. It is mentioned that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Trinad api suni chena tarur api saishitruna. One should be very tolerant. In other words, one should not get affected by if somebody says anything ill for you. However, the same Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became so angry at Jagai and Madai that he called for his Sudarshan Chakra and he wanted to chop off. So that seems to be an irony. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself is saying be tolerant and yet he is so violent in this situation. So that is a point being explained in this next paragraph. This behavior of Lord Chaitanya is very significant. Fourth last line of the paragraph. It shows that a Vaishnava may be very tolerant and meek foregoing everything for his personal honor. But when it is a question of the honor of Krishna or his devotee, he will not tolerate any insults. And then there are three ways of dealing with such insults described in the next paragraph. Mother Anjana, please read. How do we deal with insults? Third paragraph under blasphemy. Hare Krishna. Yes. Hare Krishna. There are three ways of dealing with such insults. If someone is heard blaspheming by words, one should be so expert that he can defeat the opposing party by argument. If he is unable to defeat the opposing party, then the next step is that he should not just stand there meekly, but should give up his life. The third process is followed if he is unable to execute the above-mentioned two processes. And this is that one must leave the place and go away. If devotee does not follow any of the above-mentioned three processes, he falls down from his position of devotion. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So, someone is heard blaspheming by words, one should be so expert they can defeat. If not, then he should not stand there but give up his life. Hare Krishna. And the third is, if he is not able to do any of those things, then he should leave the place and go away. If he doesn't do that, then he falls away from his position of devotion. So, that brings an important discussion here. Uh, if one has heard a blasphemy, then how to purify oneself? That's the point here. So, if in case you have, we have we've been a part of the conversation where you've heard criticism of another Vaishnava. Now, anything that we hear, it affects our mind. And if in case our mind has become contaminated or polluted towards another devotee, then we cannot think anything good about that Vaishnava. Our mind will again and again bring those thoughts. How do we purify ourselves of that situation? If in case none of these we could do, we couldn't walk away, we couldn't shut him down, you know, we couldn't do any of this. And of course, giving up life is altogether out of our bounds. So if we couldn't do any of those things, we were stuck in a conversation where we had to hear it. How do you purify yourself of this situation now? What do you do? What are possible solutions? Any thoughts on it? Mother Indoratika, please go ahead. We can uh, think about the positive sides and uh, remember, tell others about the positive sides of the devotee. We can it think depends. of positive side or uh, tell others. One way it is from one who has heard of this criticism, we go back to that person and tell him about the positive side of that Vaishnava and probably help him out and help yourself. So where, you know, that, that offense which we became part of it, we can get purified of it. Now, what if, what if what you heard as a criticism turns out to be true? What do you do then? You heard somebody's criticism, somebody's fault, but it turns out to be a true thing. But your mind is now caught up, you know, your mind is thinking about it. What do we do then? How do we purify ourselves? These are common things, huh? it happens around or no? Yes, Chaitanya Bhagavan Prabhu. Mr. Prabhu, Dandavat Pradhan. Prabhu, probably we can pray for him so that he can come out. We can pray for him. But the point is, we ourselves are contaminated because we heard a blasphemy, right? We heard a criticism. And the point is, it is true now, all right. What do we do? How do we do? Fix it. Giridhari Gopinath Prabhu, please go ahead. 
Prabhu, we should not say about things to others. Prabhu, you are not audible. Clear what enough. What, what we heard, we should not say to others. What we heard, we should not say to others. But at least our mind is affected. So for this, it is mentioned, if in case what you heard is true, then we should bring it to the attention of our seniors. We should tell them in the mood of helping that Vaishnava. Because somewhere we have to express to get ourselves purified and corrected. Either we tell a senior with an understanding that, you know, let the senior help this Vaishnava because, you know, there is an issue found with this particular Vaishnava. Or else we may get corrected. You know, this is not the mood what we should be. What if someone approached with correct information? Although what he conveyed was correct, but the mood was not appropriate. We were saying, right, how to convey the mistake? We tell what happened, but we don't, we share our observation, but not conclusion. So what if along with the observation, this devotee have also brought on the conclusion, which means the mood was not appropriate. What do we do then? This is a situation we find ourselves, isn't it? We hear from other Vaishnavas. So, uh, situation and observation is correct, but the mood was not appropriate. Uh, how do we fix it? So, we can talk to that person who was sharing with us his observation as well as conclusion. We can explain to him that there are also good things about that Vaishnava. And as far as we are here, again, I'm going back to NOI Tech 6. You know, there are, always, there are always some faults in all of us. Of course, there are some faults in this Vaishnava, but we should not forget about his sincerity with, you know, with so many years of devotional activity and services rendering. And we should not draw conclusions. Let his seniors handle him, guide him, and you should and I, all of us should pray for his well-being rather than taking this Vaishnava as bad. He cannot do anything better. So at least with that, the person who was sharing his uh, conclusion, who had a wrong mood, at least he will be pacified. Otherwise, he's not only going to tell you, he's going to pass on this message and use to everyone else. And the last point on subject matter of blasphemy, if in case we find that we have this God-given talent, we are good at it in finding faults in others, then be proud and use it for a good cause. And how you can use this fault-finding attitude for good cause? You find fault with the one with whom you should find fault the most. And that is you yourself. Use this God-given talent in finding faults in oneself so that we can improve ourselves and engage ourselves properly in Krishna's service. Fine. Let's go to the next topic. Tilak and Tulsi Beach. Now all the positive things will be talked about. Uh, the importance of different, different things. So let's have somebody else who would like to read about Tilak and Tulsi Beach. Now the importance of putting Tilak and decorating the body with Tulsi Beach will be discussing. Mother Indu Radhika, please go ahead. Yes, Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Uh, tilak, uh, Tulsi Beach and Flower Gardens. In the Padma Purana, there is a statement describing how a Vaishnava should decorate his body with Tilaka and beads. Persons who put Tulsi beads in the neck on the neck who mark 12 places of their body as Vishnu temples with Vishnu's symbolic representations. The four items held in the four hands of Vishnu, conch, mace, disc and lotus, and who have Vishnu Tilaka on their foreheads are to be understood as the devotees of Lord Vishnu in this world. Their presence makes the world purified and anywhere they remain, they make that place as good as Vaikuntha. A similar statement is in this... Can I continue? Yes, please? yes. A similar statement is in the Skanda Purana which says, Persons who are decorated with Tilaka or Gopi Chandana, a kind of clay resembling Fuller's earth which is produced in certain quarters of Vrindavana and who mark their bodies all over with the holy names of the Lord and on whose neck the and breast there are Tulsi beads are never approached by the Yamadutas. The Yamadutas are the constables of King Yama, the Lord of Death who punishes all sinful men. Vaishnavas are never called for by such constables of Yamraj. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, in the narration of Ajamila's deliverance, it is said that Yamraj gave clear instructions to his assistants not to approach the Vaishnavas. Vaishnavas are beyond the jurisdiction of Yamraj's activities. And the last quotation. In the Padma Purana, yeah. in the Padma Purana it is also mentioned, a person 
whose body is decorated with the pulp of sandalwood with paintings of the holy name of the lord is delivered from all sinful reactions and after his death he goes directly to krishna loka to live in association with the supreme personality of godhead hari krishna the next instruction yeah so tilaka and tusi beach in other word what it means is the vaishnava body should always be decorated with tilaka and we should always wear tusi beads and as the reference it is mentioned if yamdutas happen to see body decorated with symbols of vishnu or body having a tusi bead then yamdutas don't even come close uh, to such uh, a vaishnava like that so very very important like that is deity and then it has been given to you as prasadam uh please go ahead i have a question that can i ask yes yes prabhu ji please go ahead see here it says that the different places have to be marked with different uh, this you know like shankar chakra gada everything yes so normally in in reality we don't do like that we put the markings on all the 12 places but we don't draw that chakra or we yeah this is the... different paramparas have their own different symbols so this is a generic statement padma purana is mentioning for us brahma madhva gaudiya parampara we have this 12 symbols that we draw on our body shri vaishnavas they have this symbols concept different paramparas have different uh, style of tilaka and different symbols with which they decorate on their body yeah that's okay Fine. thanks yes like that accepting flower garlands all right we can have another devotee read out now uh giridhari gopinath prabhu please read if in case your hand is up for that no no prabhu i'm sorry okay okay you must be somewhere in hospital i believe with your job okay nikhil prabhu go ahead accepting flower garlands hari krishna prabhu ji uh the next gen- next instruction is that one should put on flower garlands which are offered to the deity in this connection in the 11th canto 6th chapter verse 46 of shrimad bhagavatam uddhav says to krishna my dear krishna i have taken things which have uh, used and enjoyed such as garlands of flowers saintly articles garments just a correction it is not saintly articles it is scented oils please mark that so there are a lot of typo errors in a nectar of devotion this is one of it saintly articles nahi hai wo scented oils hai like that okay bhagwan thoda na saintly ha- articles enjoy karenge bhagwan ko to scented oil diya jata hai right and you know you get that nasima oil like that scented oils go ahead garments and ornaments and i eat only the remnants of your food stuff because i am your menial servant so therefore i am sure then i'm sure that i shall not be attacked by the spell of material energy the purport of this verse is that for any person who simply follows these rules and regulations of decorating the body with the marks of tilak of gopi chandan or sandalwood pulp and who puts on the garlands which were offered to krishna there is no question of being conquered by the spell of material energy at the time of death there is no question of such a person being called by the constables of yamraj even if one does not accept all the vaishnava principles but still takes the remnants of food stuff offered to krishna or krishna prasad he will gradually become qualified to rise to the form of a vaishnava similarly in the skanda puran lord brahma tells narad my dear narad anyone who puts on his neck the flower garden garland which was formerly used by krishna becomes relieved from all disease and reactions to sinful activities and gradually he is liberated from the contamination of matter i'll Arish. read it again what brahma ji said to narad muni tell me how many of you believe or you have a doubt or no brahma ji is telling to narad muni my dear narada anyone who puts on his neck the flower garland which was formerly used by krishna becomes relieved from all diseases and reactions to sinful activities and gradually which is later on he is liberated that's the second point but for relief from all diseases and reactions to sinful activities so is it done we offered we you know dt uh, scoff for karte galen and then you offered it to some vaishnava he is relieved from all sinful reactions what is your understanding to this any thoughts this is poetic 
presentation or what it is <laughs> what would you like to say about this relief from all disease and reactions to sinful activities just by wearing a garland offered to the deities okay let's keep this in car park remind me we'll come back you keep thinking tell me if in case you come to an answer all right the next item 24th item which shila rupa goswami mentioned is dancing before the deity mother sangeeta please read hmm. hare krishna prabhu hmm. in the dwaraka mahatmya the importance of dancing before the deity is stated by lord krishna as follows a person who is in a jubilant spirit who feels profound devotional ecstasy while dancing before me and who manifests different features of body the expression can burn away all the accumulated sinful reactions he has stocked up for many many thousands of years in the same book there is a statement by Ma- by narad baran he asserts from the body of any person who claps and dances before the deity showing manifestations of ecstasy all the birds of <laughs> sinful activities fly away upward just as by clapping the hands one can cause many birds to fly away similarly the birds of all sinful activities which are sitting on the body can be made to fly away simply by dancing and clapping before the deity of krishna does anyone know where does this uh, sins fly away to that is what is mentioned here na just as by clapping the hands one can cause many birds to fly away similarly the birds of all sinful activities which are sitting on the body can be made to fly away simply by dancing and clapping before the deity of krishna so see birds fly away they go and take shelter of something na they sit somewhere where does the birds of our sinful activities go and take shelter of yes chaitanya bhagwan prabhu they have okay. others who do not dance or <laughs> this question was asked this question was asked to shila prabhupad and shila prabhupad said this birds of sinful activities they go and take shelter of the heart of those who do not take part in kirtans this is shila prabhupada statement it goes and sit in the heart of those who do not take part in kirtans all right all right next topic bowing down in honor of the deity so mother punam if you can read please read out bowing down no, yes bowing down in honor of the deity in the naradiya puran there is statement about bowing down and offering respect to the deity it is said that there a person who has performed a great ritualistic sacrifice and a person who has simply offered his respectful obeisances by bowing down before the lord cannot be held as equals the person who has executed many great sacrifices will attain the results of his pious activities but when such results are finished he has to take birth again on the earthly planet planet however the person who has once offered respect bowing down before the deity will not come back to this world because he will go directly to the abode of krishna so in other words if you just bow down even once in honor of the deity is you're free from all your sinful reactions that's what it kind of saying you'll go back home back to godhead standing up to receive the lord this is 24 25 26 item and the brahmana puran it is said a person who sees the lord's rath yatra ka festival and then stands stands up to receive the lord can purge all kinds of sinful activities from his body you know all kinds of sinful activities reactions to sinful activities by accepting the flower garland offered to the deities by honoring deity by standing up to welcome them by bowing down all your sinful reactions are done my question is how many of you have done all this how many of you have received a garland which are offered to the deities how many of us have bowed down to the deities how many of us have got up in the aarti you know to welcome the lord like this so what all sinful reactions have gone away what is the understanding any thoughts here when you when sinful reactions is gone or no yes chaitanya bhagwan prabhu prabhu probably is it like that please correct me in like say when you say in the same case of holy name it uh, so holy name but that should be pure holy name maybe these actions when done when it is done in the pure spirit of devotion well in case of holy name it is mentioned you know one pure chanting here it is not mentioned i mean if you receiving a garland what is there of purity or impurity it is said you receive a garland all your impurity is driven away mother shama will be hari krishna prabhu ji uh 
it may be that you know uh, by by doing these activities we begin to you know uh, erase of all our uh, <laughs> like, okay. so it, it kind of begins you get an opportunity to erase it okay so sometime in future it will be erased the process has begun correct that's yes. what you're thinking yes, yes, yes. you know every morning we have to see aarti uh, what is that we are saying yani kaani chapa pani brahma tya dikhani cha tani tani pranashanti pradakshina pade pade you know it also promise you're freed from all sinful reactions like that even from the uh, sin of commit uh, killing a brahmana etc any any other thoughts on this mother shivani hari krishna prabhu ji dhanwad ka uh, prabhu ji lekin aisa bhi bolte hai na hamare shastron mein jo bhi likha hai usko humko sach manna chahiye to agar ye jo bhi kuch diya hua hai ki aap ye karoge to sinful reaction ka tab ho jayega to we should believe our uh, scriptures that is okay thank you for reminding us that we should believe i'm not denying it i'm just asking you know <laughs> how do we understand is what my question here Okay, Mother Priyanka is writing something interesting. I just noticed here at the chat. We have discussed the subject matter elaborately in Upadesha Amrita. Yes, Mother Priyanka has said very rightly. Devotees are already relieved from the sinful reactions. Oh, really? Then why are we suffering? Those all suffering are due to Vaishnava aparat. So, in the life of a Vaishnava, there is never a problem because of sin. There is no question of sin. One who has decorated his body with tilaka, one who has the holy names of the lord on his lips the sin cannot touch such a person then what what troubles such a person only offenses seva aparad nama aparad vaishnava aparad only aparad only the result of offenses is what troubles us not anything else that's a point just want to bring to your attention so we are clear about it all right thank you for everyone's input uh going to the next point this is 24 25 26 27 following the dt A similar statement is there in the Bhavishya Puran, in which it is said, even if born of a lowly family, a person who follows the Rathya Tara Ka when the deities pass in front or from behind will surely be elevated to the position of achieving equal opulence with Vishnu. So this is about one kind of a mukti which is mentioned. Next point: um, Can everyone lower their hands if their answers are done? You can all raise your hands now for reading. uh it'll be nice if everyone takes part in reading going to the temple of vishnu or to the places of pilgrimage okay mother shama will be go ahead sorry prabhu ji i was just taking okay, my okay, hand okay. down i yeah, can't yeah, see yeah. no, mother punam go ahead i'm kind of reading this time so at least you know brings you all where we are going on the book otherwise devotees are getting confused go ahead going to the temple of vishnu or to places of pilgrimage it is stated in puranas persons who attain to visit the holy places of pilgrimage like vrindavan mathura or dwaraka are actually glorified by such traveling activities they can pass over the desert of material existence in the hari bhakti shuddho daya there is a statement about the benefit of visiting the temple of lord krishna as we have explained previously in vrindavan mathura and dwaraka the system is that all the devotees take advantage of visiting various temples situated in those holy places it is stated in the hari bhakt shuddha uh, persons who are impelled by pure devotional service in krishna from entering again into the prison house of the mother's womb the conditioned soul forgets the trouble of living within the mother's womb during birth but it is very painful and terrible experience in order to make an escape from this material condition one is advised to visit a temple of vishnu with devotional consciousness then one can very easily get out of the miserable condition of material birth hari, hari krishna. krishna going to the temple of vishnu or to places of pilgrimage so at least we should make an attempt if you know not regularly once or twice in a year we visit some dham just to you know surcharge our battery special consciousness and going to the temple at least once in a week we should visit a temple just to keep ourselves in a you know right consciousness so going to the temple uh, how it affects us has been described here now circumambulating the temple of vishnu we all would have done it when we go to the temple we circumambulate the altar or the deities let's take a look at what is described here uh, mother chintamani please go ahead and read out circumambulating the temple of vishnu Hare Krishna Prabhu ji, Dandavat Pranam. Circum, 
circumvaluating the temple of Vishnu. It is said in the Hari Bhakti Sudhodaya, a person who is circumvaluating the deity of Vishnu can counteract the circumvaluation of repeated birth and death in this material world. The conditioned soul is circumvaluating through repeated births and deaths on account of his material existence, and this can be counteracted simply by circumvaluating the deity in the temple. The Chaturmasya ceremony is observed during the four months of the rainy season. So just to summarize this, yeah, this is, sorry, we can read the next one, but just to summarize this next paragraph about Chaturmasya, uh, the topic is circumambulating the temple uh, or the deity. Why Chaturmasya has been brought here in discussion? Uh, circumambulating the temple or the deity in Chaturmasya uh, at least four times, it is said, it is understood, that one has covered or traveled all the holy places of the universe. By such circumambulation, one is understood to have seen all the holy places where the Ganges River is flowing. And by following the regular principles of Chatsumasya, one can very quickly be raised to the platform of devotional service. That's the point. Let's, so circumambulation is simple, straightforward. Let's come to the Archana now. Mother, please continue reading. Read Archana. Worship. Archana. Archana means worship of the deity in the temple. By executing this process, one confirms himself to be not the body, but spirit soul. In the 10th canto, 8, 84th chapter, verse 19 of Srimad Bhagavatam, it is told how Sudama, an intimate friend of Krishna's, while going to the house of a Brahmana, murmured to himself, simply by worshipping Krishna, one can easily achieve all the results of heavenly opulence, liberation, supremacy, over the planetary systems of the universe, all the opulences of this material world, and the mystic power of performing the yoga system. The events leading to Sudama's murmuring this statement are as follows. Sri Krishna had ordered his friend Sudama to go to a Brahmana's house and ask for some food. The Brahmanas were performing a great sacrifice, and Sri Krishna told Sudama to plead with them that he and Balaram were feeling hungry and needed some food. When Sudama went there, the Brahmanas refused to offer anything. But the wives of the Brahmanas, upon hearing that Sri Krishna wanted some food stuff, immediately took many palatable dishes and went to offer them to Sri Krishna. In the Vishnu Rahasya also it is stated, any person within this world who is engaged in the worship of Vishnu can very easily achieve the ever blissful kingdom of God known as Vaikuntha Loka. Hare Krishna. So 29th and the 30th point are interrelated to some extent. 29th is about Arshna, deity worship. And the 30th point is also about rendering service to the Lord. I'd like to read a statement of Srila Prabhupada in relation to deity worship. The Pujari in Hawaii had put banana leaves, mounds of tulsi and flowers on the altar. And when Srila Prabhupada began his lecture, he commented on how beautiful the deities were and how the Pujari had done a wonderful job. Srila Prabhupada said, very important, you must decorate the deities very nicely. By decorating the deities, you are decorating your heart. Everyone was ecstatic. Then, in a grave voice, Srila Prabhupada said, if you neglect decorating the deities, you will neglect decorating your heart. Then your heart will become black. And that is why so many have left. Hare Krishna. That's about the importance of deity worship. We discussed about it in the previous session also. Let's move forward, forward to item number 30. Rendering service to the Lord. Mother Shivani. Mother, your internet is not good, looks like. Your voice yeah. is breaking. Any person who can arrange for service of them. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay, so you can ask someone else to. Yes, yes. Mother Anshana, please go ahead. Unmute yourself, please. Hare Krishna. It hmm. is stated in Vishnu Rahasya, any person who can arrange for service to the Lord in the same way that a king is given service by his attendants, is surely elevated to the abode of Krishna after death. 
Actually, in India, the temples are just like royal palaces. They are not ordinary buildings because the worship of Krishna should be performed in just the way that a king is worshipped in his palace. So in Vrindavan, there are many hundreds of temples wherein the deity is worshipped exactly like a king. In Narad Purana, it is stated, if a person stays in the Lord's temple, even for a few moments, he can surely achieve the transcendental kingdom of God. The conclusion is that those who are enriched men in society should construct beautiful temples and arrange for the worship of Vishnu so that people may be attracted to visit such temples and thereby be offered the opportunity of dancing before the Lord or chanting the holy name of the Lord or else of hearing the holy name of the Lord. In this way, everyone will be given the chance to elevate himself to the kingdom of God. In other words, even a common man, simply by visiting such a temple, will be able to attain the highest benedictions, not to mention the devotees who are constantly engaging in the service of the Lord in full Krishna consciousness. Hare Krishna. In this connection. That's all. Hare Krishna. Next paragraph, this is, you can mark it for your personal reading, where a quotation is given from 4th Canto, 21st chapter, 31st verse onward about King Prithu speaking to his citizens or subjects about the importance of worshipping deities. So that's the point here, rendering service to the Lord in essence by rendering service to the Lord in a proper mood and right manners will purify one of his sinful activities or reactions. Now, text uh, the item number 31, 32 and 33 talks about Kirtan, Sankirtan and Japa. Okay, let me ask all of you, what do you think is the difference between Kirtan, Sankirtan and Japa? Don't look at it without looking at it if you answer, that's better. The three things have been mentioned separately, Kirtanam, Sankirtanam and Japa. Yes, Mother Chintamani. Uh, uh, Japa is uh, when we uh, do it in a low voice and we only hear it. The holy name of the Lord. Okay. And singing is like we can also sit and sing you know, the Kirtan ourselves. And some Kirtan means doing it in a group, congregational chanting of the holy name of the Lord. Correct. So the three aspects of, you know, three ways of glorifying the Lord, you can say, one is Japa, is about personal relationship with the Lord, where we are remembering the Lord by chanting the holy names, that is called Japa. Kirtan is, we are offering prayers or singing bhajans uh, to the Lord, you know, by yourself, that is Kirtanam. Sankirtan, when we come together as a, uh, as a group together, and then we glorify the Lord, particularly which we have it in the artis or when we go out on the street, Harinam. That is called as Sankirtanam, like that. So singing, Kirtanam. Um, Mother Priyanka, please read. In the Linga Purana. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, turn with him. In the Linga Purana, there is a statement about glorifying and singing about the Lord. It is said there, a Brahmana who is constantly engaged in singing the glories of the Lord is surely elevated to the same planet as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Krishna. Now, Lord Krishna appreciates this singing even more than the prayers offered by Lord Shiva. Hare Krishna. Thank so this is about glorifying and singing. Now Sankirtan, there are two kinds of Sankirtan. One is Nam Sankirtan. Second is Leela Sankirtan. So Nam Sankirtan we have already discussed. Uh, I'll just read the first paragraph. When a person loudly chants the glories of Lord's activities, qualities of form, his chanting is called Sankirtan. Sankirtan also refers to the congregational chanting of the holy name of the Lord. So next paragraph talks about Nam Sankirtan. And for that, a following statement from Chaitanya Charitamrita is quoted. Uh, the end of the second paragraph. A person who chants the holy name of Krishna once can counteract the resultant actions of more sinful activities than he is able to perform. A sinful man can perform many, many sinful activities, but he is unable to perform so many that they cannot be wiped out by one single uttering of Krishna. Now the next paragraph talks about Leela Sankirtan. Mother Priyanka, if you are there, please read the third paragraph 
in the seventh canto, ninth chapter, verse eighteen of Shrimad Bhagavatam. In the seventh canto, ninth chapter, verse eighteen of Shrimad Bhagavatam, Maharaj Prahlad offers the following prayers to the Lord: My dear Lord Narsimha, if I can be elevated to the position of your servant, then it will be possible for me to hear about your activities. You are the supreme friend, the supreme worshipable deity. Your pastimes are transcendental, and simply by hearing of them, one can counteract mm. all his sinful activities. Therefore, I shall not care for all all those sinful activities because simply by hearing about your pastimes, I shall get out of all the contaminations of material attachment. There are many songs about the Lord's activities. For example, there is Brahma Samhita sung by Lord Brahma. Narad Panchratra sung by Narada Muni and uh, Srimad Bhagavatam sung by Sukhdev Goswami. If these songs are heard by any person, he can easily get out of the clutches of the material contamination. There should be no difficulty in hearing these songs of God. They are coming down from many, many millions of years ago, and people are still taking advantages of them. So, why this time should one one should not take full advantage? And thus become liberated. Hare Krishna. So next is another Krishna. reference given in the next paragraph. Uh, it's the same point where the essence is that yeah. chanting about and glorifying the Lord is the ultimate activity of yeah. the living entity. So that's about Sankirtan. In other words, we should never miss out an opportunity whenever, wherever we are. If we have this opportunity, take part in Sankirtan. Among all this singing, Sankirtanam, Sankirtanam in Japa, Sankirtan is said to be the most potent. Uh, activity to really purify our consciousness. And then the 33rd item is Japa. Uh, all right, Mother Induradhika, please read chanting a mantra or hymn softly. Prabhupada explains this over here. Point number 33. Then a mantra or hymn when a mantra or hymn is chanted softly and slowly, that is called japa. The same mantra when chanted loudly is called kirtana. For example, the maha mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Then uttered very softly for only one, for one's own hearing is called japa. The same mantra when chanted loudly for being heard by all others is called kirtana. The maha mantra can be used for japa and kirtana also. When japa is practiced, it is for the personal benefit of the chanter. But when kirtana is performed, it is for the benefit of all others who may hear. In the Padma Purana, there is a statement, For any person who is chanting the holy name, either softly or loudly, the paths to liberation and even heavenly happiness are at once open. Hare Krishna. Let's move forward. Please come to the presentation now. Is the 34th uh, item. As you look into the slide deck, hopefully, if it is visible, there are three things into this. Some pratnatmika, which means offering prayers feelingly, then ya uh, expressing one's humility, and lalasa mai, you know, expressing one's eagerness or desiring some perfection stage. Like that, submission stages are uh, divided. In the Skanda Puran, there is a statement about submission unto the lotus feet of the Lord. Those who are sober devotees can offer their submission to Krishna in the following three ways. Some, pratha, some pratha, prathanatmika, offering prayers, dhenya, bodhika, submitting oneself humbly, lalasamai, desiring some perfectional stage like this. So let's focus on the first point. So rest of his is, is expression, uh, explanation given. We'll go to the next paragraph. In the Padma Purana, there is a statement of submission in feeling by devotees praying to the Lord. This is called as Sampratha Prarthana Atmika, where devotees are offering their prayers. My Lord, I know that young girls have natural affection for young boys and that young boys have natural affection for young girls. I am praying at your lotus feet that my mind may become attracted to you in some spontaneous way. The example is very appropriate. When a young girl or boy sees a member of the opposite sex, there is a natural attraction. Without the need for any introduction, without any training, there is a natural attraction due to the sex impulse. 
This is a material example. But the devotee is praying that he may develop a similar spontaneous attachment for the Supreme Lord, free from any desire for profit without any other cause. This natural attraction for the Lord is a perfectional stage of self-realization. So for all these things, all three items, uh, there could be an exercise that we can do. There have been very beautiful songs written by Srila Bhakti no Thakur, Srila Nathandas Thakur, etc. which we can categorize in these three stages. Samprarthanatmika, Dhaniya Bodhika and Lala Samai. So let me ask this, uh, if in case, oh, maybe it is difficult a little bit, but uh, in the first stage, feelingly offering prayers, uh, you know, so that our mind may get natural attraction towards the Lord. What songs, does any song comes to your mind uh, which falls into this category? What songs uh, can we sing in this category? Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu. Okay, 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 okay. Hey Gopinath, hey Gopinath by Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Hey Gopinath, okay. Well, again, Nivedan we'll have to. Uh, uh, one thing with that comes is Bhajao Remana Shinanda Nanda. Like this. Uh, Mama Mana Mandire Rahanishide Krishna Murari. Like that, there are many songs. So now you get that there's particular moods for those songs and they express something that is what has been described in this particular section. Let's go to the second, Dainya Vabodhika, which means you're presenting your humble, insignificant case. In the beautiful song written by Srila Bhakti Nathaku where it presents this mood, Aba Rajivan Sada Papirati. Like that, there are many songs like this. So that's the point here. In the same Padma Purana, there is a statement about submission and humbleness. Are you all with me? Uh, Mother Swanam, Nikhilpu, you want to read that paragraph? Please go ahead. Yes, please. In the same Padma Purana, there is a statement about submission in humbleness. It is stated there, My dear Lord, there is no sinful living entity who is more of a sinner than myself, nor is there a greater offender than myself. I am so greatly sinful and offensive that when I come to confess my sinful activities before you, I am ashamed. This is a natural position of a devotee. As far as the conditioned soul is concerned, there is no wonder that he has some sinful activities in his past life. And this should be admitted and confessed before the Lord. As soon as this is done, the Lord excuses the sincere devotee. But that does not mean that one should take advantage of that Lord's causeless mercy and expect to be excused over and over again. While he commits the same sinful activities, such a mentality is only for shameless persons. There, here it is clearly said, when I come to confess my sinful activities, I become ashamed. So if a person is not ashamed of his sinful activities and continues to commit the same sinful activities with the knowledge that the Lord will excuse him, that is a most nonsensical proposition. Such an idea is not accepted in any part of Vedic literature. It is a fact that by chanting the holy name of the Lord, one becomes washed clean of all sinful activities from his past life. But that does not mean that after being washed off, one should again be sinful, acti sinful activities and expect to be washed again. There are nonsensical propositions and are not admitted in devotional service. Someone may think, for a while, we, I may commit sinful activities and for one day, I will go to the temple or church and admit my sinful activities so that I can become washed off and again being my sins, begin my sinning. This is most nonsensical and offensive that it is not acceptable to the author of Bhakti Rasamita Hare Krishna. Please come on the Thank presentation. You. So let's take a quick look at it. I guess you all can read it by yourself, these things. So this is Sam Prarthanatmika. Attraction without introduction. This natural attraction is perfection stage of self-realization. Introduction means you're not talking about yourself in that way. Then comes the next, uh, you know, Dainya Vodikaha, where you're expressing your situation. And as mentioned, Matulyunasti Papatma, Na Aparadi Na Kashchana, 
परिहरे पी लच्छा में किम ब्रुवे पुरुषोत्तम सो द पॉइंट एज जस्ट मदर रेड राइट नाउ सो वेन वी प्रेजेंट अवर केस इन फ्रंट द लॉर्ड देन वी आर अशेम्ड एंड वी मेक अ कमिटमेंट नॉट टू रिपीट दोज मिस्टेक्स अगेन द प्रेयर्स आर नॉट ऑफर इन द मूड दैट ओके नंद लेस लॉर्ड विल फॉर गिव मी एंड आई कंटिन्यू दस अ पॉइंट सो लॉर्ड एक्सक्यूज सिंसियर डिवोटीज एंड देन कम्स द थर्ड मूड ऑफ सबमिशन दैट इज लाल सामई desiring some perfection so chaitanya mahapuru's example is given shunyaitam jagat sarvam govinda virahenami one should learn the small technique of crying for the lord so yeah that's a point here so example is given uh, from narada panchratra i'm looking at the book now My dear Lord, O Lotus Eyed One, when will that day come? When on the bank of the Yamuna, I shall become just like a madman and continue to chant Your holy name, while incessant tears flow from my eye. This is another perfectional stage, and another example of perfection stage is a moment will appear unto me as twelve years of time, and the whole world world will appear to me as vacant on account of not seeing you. One should feelingly pray and become eager to render his particular type of service to the Lord. last paragraph in other words one should learn how to cry for the lord one should learn the small technique and he should be very eager and actually cry to become engaged in some particular type of service this is called lolium and such tears are the price for the highest perfection even develops this lolium or excess of eagerness for meeting and serving the lord in a particular way that is a price to enter into the kingdom of god otherwise there is no material calculation for the value of tickets by which one can enter into the kingdom of god head there is only one price for this ticket lolium lalas amai which means great eagerness the next item in the series is about offering prayers we can take out the slide now so this is again in continuation to what was discussed on the 34th point submission so 35th point reciting notable prayers a devotee should select some of these prayers for his recitation can you think of some prayers that we recite on a regular basis uh, to the deities any prayers which we recite on a regular basis to the deities any thoughts or maybe you might have have picked up some prayers or shila propa also gave us some prayers that we recite on a regular basis to deities what is that jai radha madhav jai radha madhav okay <laughs> nice what is that is the simplest ha huh? that is the simplest i said i yeah, that's the simplest okay what is and yashomati nandana bis hey krishna karuna sindhu deep okay uh, yashomati nandan okay during the time of aarti at noon nasimha aarti okay nasimha aarti notable prayers hey krishna karuna sindhu deen bandhu jagat pate when do you say that okay this is at the end of this thing okay what else if you go to mayapur then you have got this uh, uh, sri krishna chaitanya prabhu nitya okay those are artis okay arti is okay prayers pe aao aap log arti se sari gira di okay kya bolo prayers prayers vajanan sundarasya gyanan jana shalakya okay but you're missing on one which is what i was trying to see if you will pick it up During darshan, no. During darshan, what do you call as Govinda Stotra? Venam kavanta maravinda dalaya taksham baraha vatam samasitam udasundarangam kandar pa koti kamaniya vishesha shobham. Govinda madhi purusham dam hamba jami. I do acknowledge this is a little difficult to capture because the way it is sung, sometimes he misses out in catching these verses only, because it's not in the actual flow that we sing. But this is one Govinda Sutra that every morning at the Shanati, it's actually offered for the Lord, and it's a meditation. This first prayer is a meditation on His beautiful form, uh, beginning with His face. and then to his rest of the form and then the second verse what is the second verse so remember what is the second verse in govinda stotra angani yasya sakalendriya yes angani yasya sakalendriya vritti manti pashyanti pantikalayanti chiram jaganti 
ಆನಂದ ಚಿನ್ಮಯ ಸತ್ ಉಚ್ಛಲ ವಿಗ್ರಹಸ್ಯ ಗೋವಿಂದ ಮಾದಿ ಪುರುಷಂ ತಮಹಂ ಭಜಾಮಿ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಮೆಡಿಟೇಷನ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಆನಂದ ಚಿನ್ಮಯ ಸತ್ ಉಜ್ವಲ ಯು ನೋ ದ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸೆಂಡೆಂಟಲ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಲಿಮ್ಸ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಡೂ ಎನಿ ಫಂಕ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಎನಿ ಆಫ್ ದ ಲಿಮ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಂಗಾನಿ ಯಸ ಸಕಲೇಂದ್ರಿ ವೃತ್ತಿ ಮಂತಿ ಪಶ್ಯಂತಿ ಪಾಂತಿ ಕಲಿಯಂತಿ ಚೀರಂ ಜಗಂತಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹೀ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಕಂಟ್ರೋಲರ್ ಮೈಂಟೇನರ್ ಯು ನೋ ಲೈಕ್ ದಿಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಸೊ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ಸ್ ದೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ಸಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಪ್ರೇಯರ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ವಿ ಶುಡ್ ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ದಿಸ್ ವಿ ಶುಡ್ ರಿಸೈಟ್ ಆನ್ ರೆಗ್ಯುಲರ್ ಬೇಸಿಸ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ರಿಸೈಟಿಂಗ್ ನೋಟೇಬಲ್ ಪ್ರೇಯರ್ಸ್ ಅದರ್ ಆರ್ತಿ ಸಾಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಪ್ರೇಯರ್ಸ್ ಯೆಸ್ 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 ದೇ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ದೇ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಪ್ರೇಯರ್ಸ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ದೋಸ್ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟ್ so so like this if you take a look at it so shila prabhupa the system that he has given many of these items are automatically covered you know so that's a point correct all right let's move to now partaking of prasad okay madaranjana please read partaking of prasad hari krishna yes there is a specific statement please there read is, there is this specific statement in in the padma purana a person who honors the prasad and regularly eats it not exactly in front of the deity along with charnamrit the water offered to the lotus feet of the lord which is mixed with seeds of the tulsi tree immediately can achieve the results of pious activities which are obtained through 10000 performances of sacrifice and rites <laughs> there is one very interesting incident around shila prabhupad um you know shila prabhupad wherever he would travel of course his prasadam would be packed and there would be a devotee who would serve him so once he was flying from one city to another city and he was accompanied by comparatively a younger devotee who didn't know much about the etiquette so but he was told prabhupad will indicate you what is lunch time you should nicely unpack it and offer everything to him and after that you can honor it if something remains all right so he served chila prabhupad and then after that whatever was there he ate himself then he saw prabhupad after eating prasadam uh, he took a little water and he rinsed his mouth and he's sitting in a plane on his seat only okay and then he took a toothpick and he cleaned his teeth so the devotee thought oh ho oh, looks like after prasadam we have to clean our tooth so he did had a toothpick you know and he did had the guts to ask shila prabhupad so he went out to his bag and took out toothpaste and toothbrush <laughs> and he started brushing his teeth prabhupad said what are you doing he said prabhupad i'm just following you you cleaned your teeth you you rinsed your mouth you cleaned your teeth i'm also doing prabhupad said you fool cleaning the mouth the toothpick is a different thing than cleaning the mouth the toothpaste and toothbrush you do that before you honor prasadam not after eating prasadam anyways partaking of prasadam uh, you know immediately achieve the results of pious act which are obtained through 10000 performances of sacrificial rites like that drinking chandamrita yes somebody else would like to read who has not spoken so far boli chandra chandamrita is obtained in the morning while the lord is being washed before dressing scented with per- perfumes and flowers the water comes gliding down through his lotus feet and is collected and mixed with yogurt in this way this chandamrit not only becomes very tastefully flavored but also has tremendous spiritual value as as described in the padma purana even a person who has never been able to give in charity who has never been able to perform a great sacrifice who has never been able to study the vedas who has never been able to worship the lord or in other words even one who has never done any pious activities will become eligible to enter into the kingdom of god if he simply drinks the chandamrita that is kept in the temple hari bol the temple. nothing you have the done temple. nothing you got to do just do one thing every morning go to temple and drink chandamrita nitai gor hari bol finish can i continue prabhu ji yes yes please finish it uh in the temple it is the custom that the chandamrita be kept in a big pot the devotees who come to visit and offer respect to the deity take three drops of chandamrita very submissively and feel themselves happy in transcendental bliss hare krishna 
Next item, smelling the incense and flowers offered to the deity. Naveen Prabhu, would you like to read? We got a book, then please read the next item. Smelling the incense and flowers offered to the deity. In the very book, it's to the there is a statement about the incense. Can you be a little louder, Naveen Prabhu? Yeah. In the three book, it's to do there. There is a statement about the incense which is offered in the temple. When the devotees smell the quick flavor of the incense which is offered to the deity, they thus become cured of the poisonous effects of material contamination. As much as one becomes cured of the by smelling the prescribed medicinal herb. The explanation of this verse is that there is, a, there is an herb found in the jungle that experts person know how to use to revive the consciousness of one who is bitten by the snake. Simply by smelling the herb, one becomes immediately relieved of the poisonous effects of the snake bite. The same example is applicable. When a person comes to visit the temple and smells the incense offered to the deity, he is cured at the time, at that time, from all this material contamination. Hare Any devotee coming into the temple should only yeah. stop talking to the deity. We'll, we'll pause here, Navin Prabhu. So, just to summarize, what Navin Prabhu was reading about it. So, smelling the incense. When the devotees smell the good flavor of the incense which is offered to the deity, thus they become cured of the poisonous effect of material contamination example is given is uh, as one becomes cured of snake bite by smelling the prescribed medicinal hubs and then there is a next point which is there is any devotee coming into the temple should always offer something to the deity fruits flowers incense etc if one cannot offer anything in cash something else must be offered in india the system is that all the ladies and gentlemen who come in the morning to visit the temple bring so many things even one morsel of rice or one morsel of flour can be offered it is a regulative principle please note one should not go to see a saintly person or the deity in the temple without any offering the offering may be very humble or it may be priceless even a flower, little fruit, little water, patram, pushvam, phalam, toyam, must be offered. So when a devotee comes to offer something to the deity in the morning, he is sure to smell the good flavor of the incense. At once he becomes cleansed of the poisonous effect of material existence. And then there is a further quotation of Tantya Shastra and Agastya Samhita. Moving to the next item, touching the deity. Okay, who else have not read so far? Mother Priya, would you like to read? Yes, please go ahead. Hare Krishna. In the Vishnu Dharmotra, there is a statement about touching the lotus feet of the Lord. It is said, only a person who is initiated as a Vaishnava and is executing devotional service in Krishna consciousness has the right to touch the body of the deity. In India, there was agitation during Gandhi's political movement because the low-born classes of men like street sweepers and chandalas are prohibited, according to the Vedic system, from entering the temple. Due to their unclean habits, they are prohibited. But at the same time, they are given other facilities so they may be elevated to the highest grade of devotional service by association with pure devotees. A man born in any family is not bad, but he must be cleansed. That cleansing process must be adopted. Gandhi wanted to make them clean simply by stamping them with the fictitious name, Harijana, children of God. And so there was a great tug of war between the temple, tower, temple owners and Gandhi's followers. But anyway, the present law is the law of all scripture, that if anyone is purified, he can enter into the temple. Actually, that is the position. Only one who is properly initiated, who is properly following the rules and regulations, can enter and touch the deity, not all. And one who touches the body of the deity, following such regulative principles, is immediately delivered from the contamination of material sins, and all of his desires become fulfilled Without Hare Krishna. Krishna. This is regarding Krishna. touching the deity. In general, Brahmanas are only allowed to touch the deities. In special cases, Jagannath Bhadra Subhadravani were allowed until some years ago. And Pandapur, Vitalji deity was also allowed to be touched, but now it's not allowed. But that is what is mentioned. The next is seeing the... Our, uh, yes. Pandapur, when we come, we are not allowed to touch the deity, you know, because these the deities are very much inside. 
and from far off only we can see the generally deity. it's not allowed anywhere as far as i know there are two examples jagannath bade subhadra from puri as well as uh, vithal dev <clears throat> in pandarpur even that is stopped now in sri sampradaya absolutely no correct correct yes. it's not allowed anywhere sri sampradaya even if you are a brahmana or whatever it is you are not allowed to touch ha point anywhere. is what it was mentioned about touch here is while doing dt worship because anywhere you go dt is a way much inside you're not allowed anywhere closer to the altar no. so who can touch is mentioned is the brahmanas can touch the dt in terms of service that's the idea just like uh, i've heard of it i don't have any kind of direct reference to it but what i've heard is about uh, maybe you're not brahmana so you may not get a chance to offer dt worship but just seeing the dt worship is equivalent to offering dt worship mm. so that way if you see dt is being served that is kind of in the same way i, I can say in that right okay correct correct uh, all right vakanpati please read seeing the dt in the varah purana there is a statement praising the seeing of the deity of sri krishna in the temple a devotee says a devotee says that my dear vasundara any person who goes to vrindavana and sees the deity of govinda deva is free from the court house of yamaraja and is allowed to enter into the highest planetary system in which it is the demigods this means that even an ordinary person who goes to vrindavana out of inquisitiveness and by chance sees the temple especially that of govinda deva even if he is not elevated to the spiritual kingdom he is still assured promotion to the higher planetary systems this means that simply by visiting the deity of govinda and vrindavana one becomes highly elevated in pious life hari krishna so if in case while i don't know if you're paying attention <clears throat> uh, to the point just like propad morning program covers most of it we get to see the dt we get to offer flowers to the dts we get to sing prayers or offer prayers to the dt all that all of these items are covered in one shot like that uh, let's make this point as a last point uh, because i'll have to break today early today uh, a little bit so we'll read the last point observing aarti and celebrations of the lord okay but the neha let's hear from you please read out observing aarti and celebrations of the lord in the skanda purana there is the following description of the result of seeing aarti worship of the deity if someone sees the face of the lord while aarti is going on he can be relieved of all sinful reactions coming from many many thousands and millions of years past he is even excused from the killing of a brahmana or similar prohibited activities as we have already explained there are different ceremonies to be observed such as the birthday of krishna the birthday of lord ramchandra the birthday of some prominent vaishnavas the ceremony of julan yatra with the lord sitting on a swing and dola yatra the lord's activities in the month of march in all festivals the lord is seated on a car and the car moves through different streets of the city so that people may take advantage of visiting the lord in the bhavishya purana it is said in such a ceremony if even a chandal dog eater simply out of curiosity sees the lord on the cart he becomes counted as one of the associates of vishnu in the agni purana it is set, stated any person who in gladness sees the worship of the deity in the temple will obtain the result of kriya yoga which are described in the panch panch ratra panch ratra panch ratra scripture kriya yoga is a system of practice much like practical devotional service but it is specially meant for the mystic yogis in other words by this gradual process the mystic yogis are eventually il- elevated to the devotional service of the lord hari krishna so uh, until now our up to guru puja items have been covered in the morning program you know uh, remembrance of the lord offering prayers seeing aarti etc et so those all have been covered what happens after guru puja in our morning program what happens so class that begins the next subject matter chapter 
techniques of hearing and remembering. So that would be a very important subject matter which we'll uh, discuss when we catch up next time. So that would be the subject matter, uh, you know, uh, to begin with. So until uh, now, we have covered up to 41 items. So first 20 items, or oh, you know, there were items like what not to do and what to do. And that continues here from chapter 10. So we'll pause here. Uh, if in case anyone wants to add something uh, or have any clarification, I don't know for anything question here because of straightforward things that we got to do. Uh, one uh, message we can take home message that we can take from what we read today in chapter 9 is if in case we are not able, because these are the things which we have to do on a regular basis, uh, everyday affair, if you're not able to go to temple uh, because temple is far away or whatever is the reason, at least then we should perform these activities at home by offering prayers, by having artis, uh, by offering flowers, and if possible, by hearing Srila Prabhupada lecture or joining online lecture from your respective temple like that. And that's how we purify our consciousness. And that's how we can follow those regulatory principles of devotional life as uh, kind of recommended by Srila Rupa Goswami, which are essential for purifying our consciousness and protecting ourselves from further material contaminations. Otherwise, although the method is easy, simple and straightforward, but we are living in a very, very dangerous age where the temptations are so much, uh, so easy to get distracted. So this is a kind of one message we can take it from today's discussion. At least we should have a home program. Uh, at least we should have some program at our home on a daily basis. With that, I pause here. Jagaduru Srila Prabhupada Ki, Srila Rupa Goswami Ki, Bhakti Rasam Ita Sindhu Ki. Thank you all for your kind attention. So we won't be having a class for the next two weeks. 6th April and 13th April will not have a class. We will have the opportunity, some of us, to practically follow these instructions of Srila Rupa Goswami at Vrindavan Dham. Uh, so I will be returning back from Vrindavan on 14th Sunday. So we'll meet next on 20th. It's my humble request to all of you, if in case um, you have missed any of the sessions or if you have not yet read until chapter 9, please do do the reading. Because after this, remaining chapter is going to go very quickly. And of course, there are a few more chapters which may require some explanation. But after that, it will go very quickly. It should not happen. I come after Vrindavan and I'll tell you, Hare Krishna, three weeks down the line, you have your exam. You should not get a shock or surprise. huh? So I'm kind of giving you, you have a two weeks vacation to prepare for your exam. If not prepare, at least read up to chapter 9. Please do so. If time permits, here to the lectures, if in case you missed it. All right. Uh, All right. Seeking your blessings that um, we may have a yes. safe trip at Vrindavan and wish you all the best. Yes, Vakant Prati Prabhu. I'm also in Vrindavan Prabhu. We are, uh, we have got this, uh, our Guru Maharaj. Oh, uh, yes. Disciples. Correct, correct, correct. Yeah. I mean, we're just crossing yeah. each other. When you conclude Govardhan, we reach Govardhan. When you can, yeah, I'm also coming going in the second leg of uh, tour, tour only, so I'm not going for Govardhan Parikrama because I've just returned. Okay, to, okay so, so when your Vrindavan of... Parikrama starts, we would be at Govardhan for those days. When your Vrindavan okay. Parikrama ends, <laughs> then we reach Vrindavan. We are reaching Vrindavan on 10th, and your Vrindavan okay, ends, I'm, yeah. So I'm reaching on 6th. And leaving on 13th. So 6th oh, to 13th, I'm in Vrindavan. Perfect. So we'll meet after 10th then, if in case you're there. Yes. Uh, after yes. 10th we'll onwards, we'll be in Vrindavan. Oh, nice, nice, nice. We'll be um, very pleased to meet you and also want to introduce you, my Guru Maharaj, saying that you are my Siksha Guru. Now, <laughs> oh, Maharaj is personally but coming there? Because he is coming tonight. Oh, he's personally there? Yes, ah, he's personally there. This is what? what is Not only there, but 10 sannyasis are there. Yeah, what is the occasion? It is his uh, some sannyas uh, anniversary or something. It is the it is the uh, what do you call that? The Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's uh, pada 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 paduka, you know. Yes. So totally, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Maharaj wanted to establish 108 padukas in different parts of the country, okay. wherever Chaitanya Mahaprabhu visited. Okay. So the entire Govardhan and Vrindavan, Guru Maharaj says. 
establishing those uh, uh oh, stapan oh. is the stapana of the padukas oh story. nice so the different maharajas coming to do it even in bombay did radhanath swami maharaj gopal krishna swami maharaj yes. they all did that oh okay so that was a ceremony that, so continuation that yeah oh nice so after 10th or on 10th i'll get in touch with you let us know if there are some programs yes, going please. on we'll bring the whole yeah. group there for the program if in case maharaj is giving some yes. darshan or something or there is other sanyasi giving lecture that'll be very nice i thought you Every know by, i thought by 10th it will end so i was in that mindset okay no god we'll be waiting for you hari go <laughs> okay <laughs> do not forget to bring your nod book up your reading assignment still holds true <laughs> What what book? I said. Do not do not forget to carry your NOD book. Ah, your reading assignment still holds true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, then. We can move. We will catch you there in Vrindavan. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Hare Krishna.